SharePoint permissions is always a hot topic whenever we talk about SharePoint. So what exactly SharePoint permissions are? In nutshell, SharePoint permissions are the way to restrict access and control anything within a particular SharePoint site. But there's a lot in SharePoint permissions to play around. SharePoint permissions are very customizable that you can control anything on any level. In SharePoint Online, there are two components that construct the SharePoint permissions, site groups and permission levels. When we create a SharePoint site, be it a team site or a communication site, by default, we get three site groups, site owners, site members, and site visitors. These groups are basically used to categorize the users. A site owner has full control over the site. He can modify the site. He can modify the site content. He can manage the permissions and he can delete the site. The site members have added permission on the site. A site member can edit the documents. He can upload the documents. He can edit the list items. He can delete the items. He can delete the documents, but he can't delete the site and he can't manage the permissions and the recycle bin. Whereas a site visitor is a read only permission. A user who is part of site visitor group he can view the site. He can view the documents within document library. He can download the documents, but he can't make any changes within the site. So these three groups are the default groups. Those are created when we create a SharePoint site, but we can create multiple groups as per our requirement. Then we have permission levels. The permission levels are the collection of permissions. A permission level decide what exactly a user can do with a particular permission. There are five standard permission levels, full control, design, edit, contribute, and read. A user with full control permission will have full control over the site. A user who has design permission can view the site, he can customize the site, he can update the content, or he can approve the request. Similarly, a user who has edit permission, he can edit and delete list or the list items and he can delete the documents. A user who has contribute permission, he can view the site content, he can add or update the list items, he can delete items and he can delete the documents. And the users who have read permissions, they can view the site content and they can download the documents, but they cannot make any changes within a particular site. You can assign these permission levels to the site groups or you can create a custom group. For example, we can create a group with name contribute and we can assign contribute permission to this particular group and then we can add a user within this group. We can create a separate group for site designers those will have only design permission on a particular site. Now the three groups that we discussed earlier, site owners, site members and site visitors, the site owner group has full control permission. That means the users who are part of the site owners group in a particular SharePoint site will have full control over that SharePoint site. The site members group has edit permission and the site visitors group has read permission. Now, apart from these five standard permission levels, we can create custom permission levels and we can assign these permission levels to the group of users. For example, we can create a permission level edit items. Then we will create a group and we will assign this permission level to this group. And then we can add the users within this group and the users will get edit items permission. Now these users can edit items within a particular list. They can edit document libraries and they can customize the web parts within the SharePoint site. Or you can create a permission, let's say create subsite, assign that permission level to a group of users and the users will get only the permission to create subsites. 
So the SharePoint permissions can be customized at any level. We can customize the SharePoint permissions as per our business requirements. Apart from the groups and permission levels, there are a lot of other things in SharePoint permissions to talk about. And we will discuss all these topics in detail in upcoming videos. But for now, I want to talk about permission inheritance. So what is permission inheritance? By default, a SharePoint site, list, and document libraries inherit the same level of permissions. Those are assigned on the site level. That means if a user has honor permission on a site or is a part of site honor group, that user will have honor permission on that particular SharePoint site. He will have honor permission on the list, on the list items as well. He will have honor permission on the document library and he will have honor permission on the files and the folders within the document library. Likewise, if a user is part of site member group, he will have added permission on the site. He will have added permission on the list and the items within the list. And he will have added permission on the document library and the files and folders within that document library. So this is called permission inheritance. The permissions, those are defined on the site level are being used by the list and the document libraries of that particular SharePoint site. But in SharePoint, we can break this inheritance. Let's assume we have a user who is part of site honor group of a particular site. That means this user has honor permission on the complete site. And by default, he will have honor permission on the list and the document libraries of this site. But my requirement is I do not want to give him honor permission on the document libraries. I want to give him view only permission on the document libraries of this site. So in this scenario, we will break the permission inheritance between the site and the document library. We will use unique permissions on the document library. So this way, this user will have honor permission on the site. He will have honor permission on the list, but he will have view only permission on the document library of this site. He can modify the site content. He can delete the site. He can modify the list and the items of the list, but he will not be able to modify anything within the document library. Apart from this, we can further break the inheritance between a site, a list and its items. Let's assume we have a user who has honor permission on a list, but we can assign him added permission on the list items. Or if a user is part of site members group, he has added permission on a document library. We can assign him view only permission on the folders or the files within a folder. So this is also possible in SharePoint online. So when a site list or a document library is using the same set of permissions. Those are defined on the site level. This is called permission inheritance. And when we have unique permissions assigned on the list or the document library, this is called breaking the permission inheritance. So now let's move to the SharePoint site and let's see how to manage SharePoint online site permissions. Before we dive deep into the permissions or before we learn how to manage the permissions in SharePoint, let's get a basic understanding of the SharePoint permissions. So this is a communication site. If you go to settings of this site and you click site permissions. Here we can see three default groups, site owners, site members and site visitors. Every SharePoint site that we create, be it a team site or a communication site, every site has these three groups. Now, if I expand these groups, we can see concepts user who is currently logged in is the owner of this particular communication site. We do not have any member within this site and we do not have any user added as site visitors. 
Now, if I go to document library of this particular site, and within document library, if I go to settings, library settings, more library settings, and click permissions for this document library, we can see same groups here. And here it says this library inherits permissions from its parent. That means this document library is inheriting the permissions from this site. And if I click honor group, we can see the same user is added within the honor group. And we do not have any user in members. And we do not have any user within the visitors group as well. Now you might be thinking the groups that we see here, it says site owners, site members, and site visitors. But the groups that we see here, it says news members, news owners, and news visitors. So all these groups are the same groups that we see here or the groups that we see on the site level. If you go to advanced permission settings of this particular site, you can see the same name of the groups, news members, news owners, and news visitors. So basically, the groups, those are created in the backend by SharePoint Online. These groups are created with the name of your SharePoint site. For example, my SharePoint site name is news. And if I click settings, site permissions, these groups will be site owners, site members, and site visitors. But at the backend, if you go to advanced permission settings or you go to any permission settings in the classic view, in that view, you will see the groups with the name of your SharePoint site. So the groups that you see here and the groups that you see in the site permissions are same. This is done so that the groups can be easily identified based on a particular site. Likewise, if I go to another site, which is a team site, and if I click settings, site permissions, we can see same groups here as well, site owners, site members, and site visitors. But if I go to advanced permission settings on this team site, we can see the three groups, but the name of the group is finance members because the name of my site is finance. So at the site level or in the front end, we will see site owners, site members, and site visitors groups. But at the background or within the classic view of SharePoint permissions or within advanced permission settings, we will see site name members, site name owners, and site name visitors. Before we start managing permissions on a SharePoint site, we need to first understand what type of SharePoint site we are working on. Because depending on the site type, we manage the permissions differently. Let me show you this practically what we are talking about. Let's click create site. In SharePoint Online, we have two types of sites, team site and communication site. And for both these sites, we manage permissions differently. First, you need to understand the difference between communication site and a team site. A communication site is used for one-way communication. A communication site is used to share the information with the users, whereas a team site is used for collaboration. When you create a team site, you get Microsoft 365 group associated with that particular site. This Microsoft 365 group has a mailbox. It has a calendar. We can associate Microsoft team with this group and we can associate this group with planner. The membership of a team site is managed from the Microsoft 365 group that is associated with the team site. So the idea behind this is the users who are part of this Microsoft 365 group, they will automatically get access to the group's mailbox, group's calendar, 
they will get access to the team that is connected with the group the planner that is connected with this group and they will get access to the sharepoint team site that is connected to this group whether you use these applications or not by default if a user is added within this group he will get access to all these applications so basically the idea is you do not have to manage the permissions on these applications those are associated with the group or you do not manage the permissions on the team site you will be managing the permissions on the microsoft 365 group and once you become the member of this group by default you will get access to all the applications those are connected with this group along with the sharepoint team site but in case of a communication site a communication site doesn't has a microsoft 365 group associated and the permissions for the communication site are managed from the site itself now let me show you how permissions work in a communication site so this is a communication site and you can easily identify if this is a team site or a communication site in communication site we do not see the group type and we do not see the number of members because the communication site doesn't has a group associated so to manage the permissions for a communication site you can click site access at the top right and here you can see the site groups site owners site members and site visitors if you expand these groups you can see this user is part of site owners group so he has full control over this site we do not have any user under site members and site visitors apart from this you can also go to settings and then go to site permissions and you can see same three groups here and you can see this user is part of site owners group and we do not have any user as of now under site members and site visitors now if you want to add someone within these groups or you want to assign permission to a user over this site so you can click share site and here you will type the name of the user for example bob ross and if you click on this drop down arrow either you can assign him read permission or you can give him full control over this site or you can assign him edit permission if you give read permission to bob ross he will be added under site visitors group if you give him full control bob ross will be added under site owners group of this site and if you give him edit permission he will be added under site members group so let's say we want to assign him edit permission so let's click edit and click add and let's expand site members and we can see bob ross is now a member of this site if you want to add someone in site visitors group so click share site and here let's add a user and give him read permission and click add and we can see team one is added under site visitors group and he has read permission over this site now let's say you want to give read only permission to all the users of your organization on this particular site in sharepoint we have two default groups if you go to advanced permission settings and let's click on any group and go back to groups here we can see everyone and everyone except external users everyone group includes all the users of your tenant including the guest users but the other group everyone except external users this group includes all the users of your tenant excluding the guest users so let's say i want to add everyone under this site with read only permission but i do not want to add guest users or i do not want to give read only permission to guest users so we will click share site and here we will type everyone and we can select this group everyone except external users and we will give read permission and click add and 
we can see everyone except external users are added under this particular site and they have read only permission now apart from this interface you can manage these permissions from here also let's go to advanced permission settings and here we can see the same three groups site members site owners and site visitors as we discussed in the previous video the groups that you see on the site level these groups will be site owners site members and site visitors but if you will go to advanced permission settings here you will see same groups but instead of site this will show your site name in my case my site name is news so under advanced permission settings the group's name will start with news so to manage permissions from advanced permission settings If I click news members, which is the site members group, I can see Bob Ross is part of this group. And under visitors, we have team one and everyone except external users. Now, if you want to add someone within this site permission from advanced permission settings, you will click on the group and at the top, you will click new, add users. And here you will look for the name and click share. And we can see team two is added under site visitors group. Same way, if I want to add someone in honors group, site honors group, so I'll click new. First, I'll click on the group and I'll click new. Here I'll search for the name and you can simply click share and that particular user will be added within honors group. And same way, if I want to add someone in members group, I can click new, add users. And let's say I want to add Peter Smith, click share. So now Peter Smith also has added permission on this particular site. So either you can manage the permissions from advanced permission settings or you can go to settings and site permissions and you can manage the permissions from here as well so this is how you manage permissions on a communication site this is very simple and straightforward to manage site permissions on a communication site Now let me show you how to manage permissions on a team site. This is a team site. At the top right, we can see this team is connected to a private group and we can see the number of members. And if we click on these members, we can see concepts user is the owner of this site and Bob Ross has added permission on this site. And if you go to settings, site permissions and expand these groups so under site owners we do not see the name of the user and under site members we do not see the name of bob ross this is the name of the microsoft 365 group that is connected to this particular site but if you click on this it says this is a private group it has two members and we can see concepts user and Bob Ross are part of this particular group. And if I move my mouse here, so it says we have two members. So concepts user is owner and Bob Ross is member. So basically the name of this team site is finance and the Microsoft 365 group that is connected with this site is also finance. Let's go to Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And here, go to Teams and Groups and click Active Teams and Groups. And here we see a 365 group with name Finance. And let's go to Membership. 
under owners we can see concepts user is added and under members we can see bob ross is added so to manage the permissions on a team site you will click members and click add members here look for a user for example peter smith and if you click this drop down arrow here we can see only two permissions member and owner but in case of communication site if i go to settings site permissions and if i add someone here let's say this user in communication site we have three permissions read full control edit but in team site we have only two member and owner let's say i want to make peter smith member of this site so i'll select member and click save now here we can see concepts user is owner bob ross is member and peter smith is also member now if you go back to the group and let me refresh so let's go to members and we can see peter smith is added within this microsoft 365 group so now peter smith also has access to all the applications those are connected with this particular group now in a team site you cannot add a visitor from this site that means you can't give read permission to someone from this site for example like we discussed earlier if i add a user we can only see two permissions member and owner you cannot give read permission to someone from the team site itself so if you want to add someone under site visitors group or you want to give read permission to someone on a team site you will go to microsoft 365 group that is connected to the team site then you will click site visitors and click add site visitors and here you can search for the user and then click add so this way you can add someone under site visitors group in a team site let's go to membership site visitors we can see team 2 is added under site visitors and let's refresh the page let's go to settings site permissions and here we can see team 2 user has a read only permission on this particular site so the bottom line is for a communication site we manage the permissions from the site itself and for a team site we manage the permissions from the microsoft 365 group that is connected to the team site now we have talked about how to manage site permissions on a team site that is connected to microsoft 365 group and we have also discussed how to manage site permissions on a communication site there is another type of team site in sharepoint that doesn't has a microsoft 365 group associated but only a sharepoint administrator or a global administrator can create this team site you can create this team site only from sharepoint online admin center so let's go to sharepoint admin center under sharepoint admin center go to active sites and here click create now if you click team site this will create a team site that will have a microsoft 365 group associated and if you click here you will create a communication site but to create a team site that doesn't has a group connected you will click browse more sites at the bottom make sure choose a template is selected to team site and here you will give a name to the site and under primary administrator let me type the sharepoint administrator and click next we are good with the language no changes are required here and click create site so this is our new site hr collab and if we go to write it says team site no microsoft 365 group 
So let's open this site. So you can see this is a team site. On the left, you can see this navigation bar that is available only within a team site. But at the top right, we do not see the group information. We do not see the group type and we do not see the number of members. So to manage the permissions on a team site that is not connected to a Microsoft 365 group, you will click site access. You can see same group site owners, site members, site visitors. If you want to add someone, look for the user. You can give him read permission, full control or edit. Let's say I want to give added permission to Bob Ross. Click share. And we can see Bob Ross is added under site members group. Same way, if you want to add someone under site visitors group, type the username and give him read permission. Click share. Go to site access. And we can see this user has read only permission on this particular site. And similarly, we can go to settings, site permissions. We can click share site and we can add a user from here also. Let's say I want to give him edit permission, click add. So we have this user under site members. And if we go to advanced permission settings, we can see site groups. And here you can see his site name is HR Collab. And let's go to site permissions, advanced permission settings. And here we can see the site groups are starting with HR Collab, which is the name of the site. And then we have members, owners, and visitors. If we click members, we can see the users here. If you want to add someone within this group, under members group, we can click new. And here you will type the name of the user and click share. Same way. If you want to add someone under site visitors, you will click new. Type the name of the user and click share. So the permissions on this type of site are similar to the communication site. As we discussed earlier, the permissions of a team site that is connected to a group are managed on the group level. When we add a user in a team site, that user gets added within the Microsoft 365 group that is connected with the team site. And when we give permission to a user on the group level, that user gets access to all the applications. Those are connected with that group and that is by default. But you can come across a scenario where you want to add a user only within the team site. That means the user should have access only to the team site and not to the other applications. Those are associated with this group. So basically, we want to bypass the Microsoft 365 group membership. We want to add a user within the team site permissions and not to the Microsoft 365 group. So this is a team site. You can see this team site is connected to a group and we can see the number of members. If I click here on number of members and if I add someone from here, that particular user will be added within this site as well as he will be added within the group that is connected to this site. And we do not want to do that. So instead of this, we will go to settings site permissions and click add members. Now here you see two options, add members to group, share site only. If I select add members to group, that means if I add a user from here, that user will be added within this site as well as he will be added within the group. But if I want to add someone only to the site and not to the group, I'll select share site only. And now if I add someone from here, let's say team two, click add. 
and expand site members we can see team 2 has added permission on this particular site however if i go back to teams and groups and let's open finance membership members i do not see this team 2 user here because we have added this user on the site level this user is not added within the microsoft 365 group so this user has added permission on the sharepoint site only this user is not added in the group so he doesn't has any permission on the group level and he doesn't has any permission on the applications those are connected to the group so this user can access the site he can read the documents on this site he can edit the site content but he can't access microsoft teams that is connected to this site he can't access the group mailbox group calendar or the site planner so this is how you can bypass microsoft 365 group membership while assigning site permissions in a team site now let's understand how to remove users properly from the site permissions in a communication site if you want to remove a user you will go to site access you can expand the groups we can see the number of users added under site members site visitors let's say i want to remove team 1 from site visitors group i'll click on this drop down arrow click on remove and that's it the user is removed if i want to remove peter smith from here i can click remove and this user is removed from the site members group apart from this you can go to settings site permissions you can remove the users from here also you can click remove or you can go to advanced permission settings and let's say i want to remove a user from this group from visitors group i'll open the group and let's say i want to remove this user team 2 i'll select the user go to actions and click remove users from group click okay and this user is removed if i want to remove this group everyone except external users select the group click actions and click remove users from group click okay and this group is removed from visitors group same way if you want to remove someone from the members group click on the group select the user click on actions and click remove users from group this particular user will be removed from site members group as we discussed earlier a communication site doesn't has a group associated so if you remove any user from here or from the site permissions that user will be removed from this site but in case of a team site this is quite different in a team site if you go to settings site permissions expand the groups now if i click here under edit for the group level permission i do not see remove permission but if i click for this user because this user is added on the site level if i click here i can remove this user from here but remember one thing team 2 user has added permission on this site only he is not added on the group level so if i remove this user from here this will be removed from the site same way this user has read only permission on the site level that is why we can see his name but for other users who are added on the group level we do not see their names but if we click here then we can see the name of these users now if i want to remove this user from here i can simply click on remove so this user will be removed from the site permission but for the other users who are added on the group level we can see the name of the microsoft 365 group instead of their names because the membership of a team site is derived from the microsoft 365 group now if i go to advanced permission settings 
and if I click site members group, I do not see the name of the users. I can only see the name of the group. That means all the users who are added as members in Microsoft 365 group are part of this site group. If you go to Microsoft 365 admin center and this is the group for our site finance. So here we can see we have these users under members under honors. We have concepts user. Now if you go to settings and site permissions advanced permission settings. So if I remove a group, let's say from site members, if I remove this particular group, so all the users who are part of this group should be removed. But that is not the case. Let's remove this group first. Select the group and click remove users from the group. Click OK. So the group is removed. So now we have site members group, but inside this group, there is no one. So this group is removed from the site members group. But if I go to home page and if you go to settings, site permissions, if we expand site members, we see there is nothing. However, if you go to Microsoft 365 group, let me refresh. And go to members. We can still see Bob Ross, Concepts user, Peter Smith. These three users still have member permission on the group. So the concept behind this is when you remove a user from a team site or when you remove a group from the team site groups, that group is removed from the site itself. This is not removed from the Microsoft 365 group. If I go back to team site and if I go to site permissions, advanced permission settings and click site members group. And if I add a user here, let's say, let me add this user and I'll click share. We can see this user is added under site members group. And if we go to settings for this particular site and go to site permissions, site members, we can see this user is added and he has added permission. However, if I go back to the group, let me refresh. Members, we do not see this user here. So in a team site, there are two types of memberships. One is site membership and the other one is Microsoft 365 group membership. If you remove a user from the site level in a team site, that user is removed from the site only. Or if you add a user or a group in the site groups, that user is added on the site level. So to remove a user from the Microsoft 365 group, you can go to Microsoft 365 group, go to membership, and select the user and click remove as member. Click remove. And this user is removed from the group level permissions. The other way to remove a user from the group is you can go to team site. And at the top right, you see number of members. Click on this. Here you will see the number of users. Click on this permission drop down arrow and click remove from group. So now Bob Ross is removed from the team site as well as he is removed from the group that is connected to this team site. Let's go back. Let me refresh. And we do not see Bob Ross here. So this is how you can remove a user from the team site. So this is how you remove users from the team sites and from communication sites. Before we start talking about advanced permission settings, I would suggest you to go through the previous videos where we have talked about site permissions. So let's talk about 
advanced permission settings. Advanced permission settings are available on both team site and a communication site. This is a communication site and to access advanced permission settings, you will go to settings and you will go to site permissions and then you will click advanced permission settings. And if you want to access advanced permission settings on a team site, the process will remain same. You will go to settings, site permissions and click advanced permission settings. We have already gone through this wizard when we talked about the site groups, but in this demo, we will explore all these options that you can see under advanced permission settings. So the first option is grant permissions. This option is used to assign permissions to a user or to a group of users. If you want to add a user in one of these site groups, select the group and then click grant permissions. And here, look for the user, for example, team two, and click share. And if we click this group, we can see this user is added under site members group. And if I want to add another user, I can simply click on new, click add users. And here I'll type the name of the user, click share, and this user is added. Or you can select the group where you want to add a user. Let's say I want to add a user under site or visitors group. I'll select the group and click grant permissions. Search for the user here, for example, team one and click share. And let's open the group. And we can see this user is added under site visitors group. Now, one thing that you need to be aware of is if you add a user or group from here, that user will be added on the site level. These users are added within the site. They are not added to Microsoft 365 group that is associated with this team site. If we go to home and click settings when it comes up go to site permissions now we added a couple of users under site members now here we can see the name of this user we can see the name of this user as well but for the other users we do not see their name we can see the name of the microsoft 365 group and if i go to visitors i can see the user name here as well now if i go to Microsoft 365 Admin Center and go to Teams and Groups, Active Teams and our site name is Concepts. So this is the group. Go to Membership, Members. We do not see these two users here, Concepts and Team2. These two users are not here. Let's go back to SharePoint site and go to Advanced permission settings. Now, if you do not want to add a user within these three site groups, like you can see here, if you add any user under site members group, he will get added permission on this site. If we add any user under site owners group, he will get full control over this particular site. And if we add any user within visitors group, he will get read only permission on this site. But let's say, you want to assign a different permission level to a user. So you will click grant permissions and here you will click show options. And from here you can select other permission levels that you want to assign to a user. For example, I want to give contribute permission to a user. So I'll select contribute here. I'll type a user, for example, this user and click share. And let me refresh. So now this user has contribute permission on this site. If you want to assign a different level of permission, go to grant permissions and let's type a username here. For example, this one and click show options. 
let's say I want to give him design permission on this particular site. So from permission level, I'll select design and click share. Click refresh. Now this user has design permission on this site and this user has contribute permission on this particular team site. Now again, these users are added on the site level. This user has contribute permission on this site and this user has design permission on this site. These two users are not added within the Microsoft 365 group. Then we have create group. Like here we can see three site groups, site members, owners and visitors. Likewise, we can create a custom group within the site permissions. Click create group. Let's give it a name. For example, contributors. You can add description also. For example, this group is to assign contribute permissions. And then we have group owner. Group owner is basically, he can manage this group. He can add or remove users within this group and he can add or remove permissions from this group. The user who will create this group will be added automatically within this group. Also, you can add only one user as group owner. If you want to add multiple users under group owner, you can create a security group, add users within that security group, and add the security group here. Next is group settings. This basically asks us who can view the membership of the group, group members or everyone. And then we have who can edit the membership of the group, group owner or group members. So let's leave these settings default. And then we have membership request. Here, you can allow the users to join and leave this group automatically or not. Also, if I click yes, this will enable this setting and this will ask you if a user is requesting to join this group, that request should be auto approved or it should go to an approver. And you can see as of now, this user, the admin account is added as an approver. So any request will go to this user. And then we can assign permissions on this particular group. You can assign full control, design, edit, contribute or read. So let's select contribute and click create. So the group is created. On the left, you can see the group name and we can see the name of the owner who is added within this group. If you go back, We can see, let me refresh the page. We can see site members, site owners, site visitors, and now we have contributors group. And it says under permission levels that this group has contribute permission. Now, if you want to add a user within this group, select the group, click grant permissions, or you can open the group. And here you will click new add users search for the user and click share so this way you can add multiple users within the group let's go back then we have edit user permissions this option is used to modify the permission level for a user or for a group but if you notice as of now this option is grayed out if i select site members group or site owners group or even site visitors group this option remains grayed out because we cannot modify the permission level for the default site groups these three site groups site members owners and visitors these are the default site groups we know if we add any user within site members group he will get edit permission if we add any user within honors group, he will get full control on this site. And if we add any user within visitors group, he will get read permission. So you can't modify the permission level for these three site groups. However, if I select contributors, 
you can see this option is now accessible even if i select this user or this user this and this these two options become accessible now let's say i want to modify the permission level for this user as of now he has design permission on this site but i want to change this permission level so i'll select the user and then click edit user permissions and from here i can either give him read permission contribute edit or full control let's say i want to give him read permission so click okay and now this user has read permission if i want to change permission level for this group select the group click edit user permissions so as of now contribute permission is assigned on this group let's say i want to assign design permission so click okay now all the users who are part of this particular group will get design permission and then we have remove user permissions this option is also available for the custom groups if i select any of these groups this option will remain grayed out but if i select this user or this user or this group this option becomes accessible so this option is used to remove permissions from a group or from a user let's say i want to remove permission for this user so i'll select the user and i'll click remove user permissions click okay and this user will be removed similarly if i want to remove this group and all the users within this group i'll select the group and click remove user permissions and click okay and now this group is removed however the group that we just deleted this group is not deleted permanently this group is removed from this particular site but this is available at the back end if you click any group let's say this one and click more we can see this group here contributors now let's say we want to use the same group again so we will go back and we will click grant permissions and here we will look for contributors group select the group and click show options select contribute and click share let me refresh so we have the group back let's open the group and we can see the user is added let's go back now the next option is check permissions this option is used to check permissions of a user or a group of users on a particular site for example let's click this and let's say i want to see the permissions of concepts user so let's select the user and click check now so it says this user has edit permission on this particular site and he is part of site members group same way if i want to check the permissions for a group let's say contributors check now so it says it has contribute permission and this is assigned directly so that means it is a group itself and contribute permission is assigned on the group level now remember one thing this option will show the permissions on this particular site only if a user has permissions on another site as well you need to go to the other site to check the permissions this wizard will show the permissions for this particular site only now the next option is permission levels we will talk about permissions levels in detail in one of the next videos and then we have access request settings these settings are used to manage the access request if you go to home page of this site and go to settings site permissions under site sharing click change how members can share now here you see access request 
This option is used to send access requests to the site owners or any other user that is added as approver. For example, I have a user logged in here and this user doesn't has any permission on this particular site. So if he will try to open this site, let me copy the link and go to this browser. So it says you need permission to access this site. Now this user can request the access. He can click request access. The request will go to approval. Now, if you go back to this site and go back to this setting, so it says the approver is concepts owner and the user with which I'm logged in right now, he is the owner of this site. So let's go to his mailbox. And we can see we have received one notification here. So it says test user wants to access concepts. This is the name of this site. Now from here, the owner of this site can either approve the request or he can decline the request. Also, if we approve this request, he can give him added permission on this site or he can give him read permission on this site. If I select edit, this user will be added under site members group of this site and if i select read and i click approve this user will be added under site visitors group so let's say i want to give him read permission on this site so select read and click approve now let's go back and let me close this type the site name again so now this user can access this site and if we go back to the site permissions and click back expand site visitors let me refresh the page and we will go to settings site permissions so we can see test user is added under site visitors group and he has read permission so let's go back to advanced permission settings and click access request settings so from here we can decide if we want to allow the members of this site to share this site and the files and folders of this site with other users or we want to allow the site members to invite other users to this site as members we can modify to whom we want to send access request notifications by default these notifications are sent to the site owners but we can select this option and we can add the email address of another user maybe of a sharepoint admin or a global administrator to whom we want to send in notifications so this is all about access request settings and then we have site collection administrators this option tells us who are the site collection administrators for this particular site a site collection administrator has full control on a particular site by default the site owners group will be added as site collection administrators that means all the users who are part of the site owners group are the site collection administrators but we can add a user as a site collection administrator for example if i type a username here for example this user or this user and if i click ok so the users who are added within honors group along with these users bob ross and this user will also be a site collection administrator for this particular site so this is all about advanced permission settings in the next video we will talk about permission levels we will learn how to create permission levels and how to assign permission levels so what are permission levels in sharepoint in nutshell permission levels are a set of permissions 
that decide what exactly a user can do within a SharePoint site. If you go to settings and we go to site permissions, advanced permission settings, you will find these permission levels on both team site and communication site. Now within advanced permission settings, click permission levels. Now here you can see these default permission levels that we can use to assign permissions within a SharePoint site. So if a user has full control permission level, he can do anything and everything within this particular site. Full control is basically the owner of the site. He can create pages, he can manage the permissions, he can delete the site and he can manage the recycle bin as well. And similarly, we have other permission levels that decide what exactly a user can do if a particular permission level is assigned to a user. But if I click on any permission level, it tells us what all permissions are assigned within this permission level. Under list permissions, we can see what a user can do with this permission within a site list or a document library. And then we have site permissions. It tells us that if a user has full control permission level, what sort of activities he can do on the site level. And then we have personal permissions like manage personal views, add or remove personal web parts and update personal web parts. Likewise, if I go back and if I click any other permission level, for example, edit, we can see most of the permissions are unchecked under this permission level. For example, a user who has edit permission level or a user who is part of site members group under this particular site, he can't approve items, he can't manage permissions, he can't create subsites, and like this you can see the permissions, those are unchecked. This particular user who has added permission level, he can't perform these activities on this particular site. So these permission levels decide what exactly a user can do within a site. And these are the default permission levels that we can use to assign to the users. But you can come across a requirement that you want to assign a different level of permissions to a user. For example, if we look at the contribute permission, any user who has contribute permission level, he can add items within the list or document library. He can edit items, he can delete items, he can view the items, or he can delete the versions. On site level, he can browse directories, he can view pages. But let's assume my requirement is, I want to assign a permission level to a user where he can view the items, he can add the items as well, but he cannot update or he can't delete the items. Now, either I can modify this permission level, I can uncheck the permissions that I want to remove from contribute permission level, or I can create a new permission level with the required permissions. And the best way is to create a new permission level instead of modifying the existing permission level. So to create a custom permission level, you will go to advanced permission settings, you will go to permission levels, and under permission levels, you will click add a permission level. Under name, you will type a name for this permission level that you're going to create. For example, I want to create a permission level for contributors, but they will not have access to deletion, to delete an item or to update an item. And under description, we will type a description for this permission level so that any site owner of this particular site is aware that what exactly this permission level is. So let's add something like can view, can add, but can't update or can't delete items 
or documents and under list permissions we will give permission add items and view items and under site permissions we will add view pages it is already added and let's leave open as well that's it let's click create so now we have another permission level with name contribute with no deletion or update and under description it says can view can add but can't update or can't delete items or documents so any site owner can easily identify what exactly this permission level is there is another way to create a permission level where you can clone an existing permission level for example let's open contribute permission level scroll it down and click copy permission level now this will create a copy of contribute permission level we can see all the permissions here those are available within contribute permission level now if i want i can uncheck the permissions that i do not want to add within this permission level for example i want to uncheck delete items and delete versions and here we will give it a name for example contribute with no deletion and let's type same thing in description and click create so this way you can clone an existing permission level now let's see how to assign this permission level to a user or to a group of users let me open another tab and let's go to settings when it comes up site permissions advanced permission settings now the default site groups that we have here like site members site owners and site visitors you cannot assign custom permission levels to these groups or you can't change the permission level of these three site groups by default the site owners group will have full control permission level the site members will have edit permission level and site visitors will have read permission level so you can't change permission level for these three groups if you select any one of these groups for example site members at the top you see edit user permissions and remove user permissions is grayed out if i select site owners these two options are still grayed out if i select site visitors these are again grayed out however if i select this custom group contributors that we have created in one of the previous videos these two options edit user permissions and remove user permissions these are now accessible likewise if i select this user account these two options are accessible so if we want to modify the permission level of an existing group select the group and click edit user permissions so as of now this contributors group has contribute permission level but let's say i want to give read permission to this group and to all the users who are added within this group so i can change the permission level from here so select the permission level and click okay and now this contributors group has read permission level similarly if i want to change the permission level for this user i'll select the user click edit user permissions and let's say i want to give him this permission level that we have created manually so i'll select the permission level and click okay so now this user has contribute with no deletion permission level now let's assume we want to create a group and we want to assign a custom permission level to that group so we will click create group and let's give it a name test same under description and no changes required here so here 
let's say i want to select this custom permission level contribute with no deletion or update so i'll select the permission level and click create so now we have let's go back so let me refresh so now we have this group with name test this group has contribute with no deletion or update permission level now if i want to add a user within this group i'll go to this group open the group click new and here i'll type the username select the user and click share now let's say i want to give permission to a user on this particular site and i want to assign this particular permission level to that particular user so i'll go to advanced permission settings and here i'll click grant permissions and let's say i want to add this user and we will click show options if we click drop down arrow we will see all the permission levels including the custom that we have just created so let's say i want to select this permission level i want to give this permission level to this user so i'll select the permission level and click share and let me refresh so now this user has this permission level now if i go to document library within the same site and if i go to settings library settings more library settings and here click permissions for this document library here we can see all the groups the default site groups and the custom groups that we have created on the site level and two users who are added on the site level like you can see here because this particular document library is inheriting the permissions from this site and if i go to a list for example i have this list within this site so let's go to settings list settings and here permissions for this list under list permissions we do not see the groups that we have on the site level or on the document library level because this particular list has unique permissions that means we have already broken the permission inheritance between the site and this particular list if i click here delete unique permissions we will talk about this in one of the next videos so this is just to break the inheritance or remove the inheritance so if i click delete unique permissions click ok so now we see all the groups and the users because now this list is also inheriting the permissions from this site now one thing that you should be aware of is the permission levels that we create in a particular sharepoint site these permission levels will not replicate to another sharepoint site that means the permission levels that we will create in a particular site will not reflect in other sharepoint site in your tenant for example in this particular site i have these permission levels and if i go to another site let's say this one this is also a team site so if i go to settings site permissions advanced permission settings click permission levels here we have only the default permission levels we do not see the permission levels that we have created on this particular site these two permission levels are not available within this site so the permission levels that you will create on a particular site will not reflect on another site if you want to create permission levels on another site you need to go to that site as a site owner or sharepoint admin or global admin and you need to create separate permission levels on another sharepoint site so this is how you can manage the permission levels in sharepoint online
So what is permission inheritance? By default, a SharePoint site, list, and document libraries inherit the same level of permissions. Those are assigned on the site level. That means if a user is a part of site honors group of SharePoint site, that user will have honor permission on that particular SharePoint site. He will have honor permission on the list on list items. He will have honor permission on the document library and he will have honor permission on the files and the folders within the document library. Likewise, if a user is part of site members group, he will have added permission on the site. He will have added permission on the list and the list items. And he will have added permission on the document library and the files and folders within the document library. So this is called permission inheritance. The permissions, those are defined on the site level, are being used by the site list and the document libraries of that SharePoint site. So to understand the permission inheritance, let's go to settings. You can check permission inheritance on both team site and a communication site. This is a team site. So let's go to settings, site permissions, and go to advanced permission settings. And here we can see three default site groups, site members, site owners, and site visitors. And we have two custom groups that we created in one of the previous videos. And we have two users who have these permissions on this particular SharePoint site. Now, if I go to document library within this SharePoint site, and we go to settings, library settings, more library settings, and permissions for this document library, we can see same set of default site groups. We can see two custom groups and we can see two users who have same level of permission on the document library as well. And here it says this library inherits permissions from its parent. So that means the level of permissions, those are assigned on the site level are being inherited by this document library. And if I go to list within this SharePoint site, go to settings, list settings and permissions for this list here as well we can see same set of three site groups default site groups we have two custom groups and we have two users and here it says this list inherits permissions from its parent that means the permissions are being inherited from the site level now if you notice on site level permissions, we have these two options, edit user permissions and remove user permissions. But if we go to document library permissions or site permissions, we do not see these two options here. But at the top left, we have this option, manage parent. So as soon as I'll click on this option, if you will notice here in the URL, I will be redirected to the site level permissions. So let's click here and you can see we are redirected to this site and these are the site level permissions. So that means as of now, this library and this list are inheriting permissions from this site. So we are not allowed to make any changes within the permissions from document permissions, from document library permissions or from list permissions. Any changes that we will have to make within the permissions, we will have to make it here. Now let me add one user on the site level permissions. Click grant permissions. And let's add this user. And let's give him edit permission. Click share. Let's refresh. So this user is added with edit permission. This is the site level permission. Now let's go to document library permissions. We do not see this user, but let's refresh the page and we can see the user here. This user also has edit permission on this document library. And within list permissions, we 
we have the user as well. So this user has edit permission on the site. He has edit permission on the document library and he has edit permission on the list. Same way, if I add a group on the site level permissions, let's say test group and let's give it design permission click create so we have the group ready let me refresh the page so we have the group here test group with design permission so as document library and list are inheriting the permissions so as soon as i'll refresh the page we will see this group here and same goes with list permissions we can see the group here as well so this is called permission inheritance now sometimes we can come across a scenario where we want to break this inheritance let's assume we have a user who is part of site owners group of a particular site that means this user has owner permission on the complete site and by default he will have owner permission on the list and the document libraries of this particular site but my requirement is i do not want to give him owner permission on the document libraries i want to give him view only permission on the document libraries within this site so in this scenario we will break the permission inheritance between the site and the document library we will assign unique permissions on the document library so this way this user will have honor permission on the site he will have honor permission on the list but he will have view only permission on the document library of this site he can modify the site content he can delete this site he can modify the list and the items of the list but he will not be able to make any changes within the document library apart from this we can further break the permissions inheritance between a list and its items let's assume we have a user who has owner permission on a list but we can assign him read only permission on the list items or if a user is part of site members group he has added permission on a document library we can assign him view only permission on the folders so this is also possible in sharepoint online so when a site list or a document library is using the same set of permissions those are defined on the site level this is called permission inheritance and when we have unique permissions assigned on the list or the document library this is called breaking the permission inheritance so as of now this document library is inheriting the permissions from the site so whatever groups users are added on the site level permissions they have access on the document library as well but let's assume we do not want to give this user any permission on this document library now if i remove this user from the site level permissions this user will be removed from here from document library permissions and this will be removed from the list permissions as well because as of now both list and the document library are inheriting the permissions from the site so to achieve this we need to break the permission inheritance between the site and document library and to break permission inheritance on the document library you will click stop inheriting permissions it says copy permissions from parent and then stop inheriting permissions so let's click stop inheriting permissions and click ok and now it says this library has unique permissions so as i said i do not want to give team one user any permission on this document library so what i'll do i'll select this user and here you can see we have two options edit user permissions and remove user permissions so i'll select the user team one and click remove user permissions and click OK. So this user is removed from the document permissions from the document library permissions. 
but if I refresh on the site level permissions, we still have this user here and we still have this user on the list permissions as well. Now, let me tell you one more thing. If you have multiple document libraries or site list in a SharePoint site, and if you want to break permission inheritance for another document library or a different site list, you need to follow the same steps on that document library as well. The changes that we are going to do here will be applicable to this particular document library only. Now I have few documents within this document library. I have some folders and few documents as well. And I have one user here logged in, Bob Ross. And this user Bob Ross is part of site members group. Let me show you. Let's go to home. And we can click here, three members. So he's the member of this site. And if I copy the link of this site, and if I paste it here, so Bob Ross should be able to access this site. And he can access the site. He can see the list. And he can see the document library. He can see the folders, files. He can open the files as well. But let's assume we do not want to allow the users of the site members group to modify this document library or to modify anything within this document library. They should not be able to upload the documents. In short, they should not have any access to this document library. So what we can do, let me close this. So we will go to the document library permissions and settings, library settings, more library settings, permissions for this document library. Now here we have this site members group. So I'll select the group and I'll click remove user permissions and click OK. So now this group is removed. This group is still available on the site level permissions. We can see the group here and this group is still available on the list permissions as well. However, this group is removed from the document library permissions. Now, if I go back here on Bob Ross browser where he is logged in, and if I refresh, so as of now, he see document library, but let me refresh. Let me paste the site name again. So now we do not see document library here. Now let's say the group that we just removed from the document library permissions, we want to re-add this group. So within document library permissions, we will click grant permissions. And here we will look for the group name. So the group name will be site name and then members. So this site name is concepts. So we will type concepts and then members. Select the group. So this group has added permission and click share. Let's refresh. So the group is added. Let's go back to Bob Ross. Let's refresh. And now he can see the document library and he can see all the folders and the files. Likewise, if I want to use unique permissions on the site list, I'll go to list permissions and click stop inheriting permissions and click OK. So now it says this list has unique permissions. Now let's say I have a user here, team one, who has added permission on this list as of now. And this user is logged in here. So let me copy the site link. And let's paste it here. So this user can access site and he can see the list. He can see the list items as well. However, let's say I do not want to give any permission to this user on this particular site list. So I'll go back to the site list permissions and here I'll select the user 
and I'll click remove user permissions and click OK. So the user is removed from the list permissions. Let's go back, refresh, and list is removed for this particular user. Now, if I re add this user in list permissions, and let's give him edit permission, refresh, so the user is added. Let's go back, refresh. Now he can see list and he can see the list items as well. So this is how you break permission inheritance in SharePoint. And this is how you can assign unique permissions on the document library or a SharePoint site list. Sometimes you can come across a scenario where you want to assign unique permission on the file and folder. In this document library, we have few files and we have folders and by default all the users who have permissions on the site level they have access to this document library as well if i click on members on the top right i can see concepts user who is currently logged in is the owner of this site bob ross and peter smith are members of this site and apart from this owner and these two members if I go to settings, site permissions, and under site visitors, we have team one user as well, who has read permission on the site level. He can view the site, he can open the document library, and he can open the documents as well. Though he can open the documents in read-only view, but still he can open it. Now in a document library, we can have confidential documents as well and we do not want everyone to have access on these documents for example let's assume this sales folder has confidential documents and i do not want the members or the visitors of this site to have any access to sales folder only the owners of this site should have access to this folder and the files within this folder now if i go to settings and go to library settings, more library settings, and permissions for this document library. So it says this library inherits permissions from its parent. That means as of now, this particular document library has the same level of permissions. Those are assigned on the site level. This document library is inheriting the site permissions. And I have a user logged in on another browser, Peter Smith, who has added permission on this site, O365. So he can view the site, he can go to document library, and within document library, he can access the folder, and he can even open the files as well. But my requirement is, only the site owners should have access to the sales folder and the files inside that folder. So let's go back to SharePoint site and let's click documents library. So there are two ways to achieve this. The first way is we will right click or you can click three dots next to the folder and go to manage access and click groups. Now here you can see the same groups. Those are added on the document library permissions and the same groups are showing under this particular folder permissions. So I do not want all the members of this site to have any permission on this folder and I do not want the site visitors also in this permission. So what we can do, click on the site members group, expand direct access, click can edit and click remove direct access. Click remove. So the site members group is removed and we will do the same thing for site visitors group. Click on the group, expand direct access, click can view, and click remove direct access. Click remove. So now the site members and the site visitors do not have any permission on this folder. Let's close this. And if you go to settings, library settings, more library settings, permissions for this document library, 
Now you see a message here. Some items of this list may have unique permissions which are not controlled from this page. If you click show these items, we can see sales folder has unique permissions. Click on manage permissions. And here we can see only one group that is site owners. We do not see site visitors or the site members. So now only the site owners have access to this particular folder. And if you go back to the other browser and let's refresh, go back to documents, we do not see sales folder here. Let's go back to SharePoint site and let me re-add the permissions. Let's go back to documents and right click or click three dots, manage access, click groups, click plus, and let's add members and visitors group. So I'll assign edit permission to members. And we will do the same thing for the site visitors groups, add site name and visitors. And this will have view only permission. So click grant access and that's it. Let's go back to the other browser, click refresh. And now Peter Smith can see the sales folder and he can see all the files within this folder. Now let me show you the other way to assign unique permissions on a folder. Let's go back to SharePoint site and click three dots, click manage access. And you see three dots at the top, click, go to advanced settings. Here you will see all the permissions. Those are assigned on this folder level. And it says this folder has unique permissions because we have already broken the permission inheritance on this folder. So if you want to remove all the users except owners, select the group and click remove user permissions. Click OK. And we will do the same thing for visitors. Remove user permissions. OK. And let's go back to Peter Smith. Refresh. So Peter doesn't have access to this folder now. Now let me make it a bit complicated. Let's go back to document library and click grant permissions. Let me re-add the permissions. So here I'll add Peter Smith and I'll give him edit permission and click share. And let's refresh the page so he can see the sales folder and he can see all the files. So now, the owners and Peter Smith has permission on that particular folder. But let's assume I have a confidential document inside sales folder. Let's say this one confidential. So I do not want anyone apart from the site owners to have access to this particular document. Site members or the site visitors or any other user with any other permission level can view or access the sales folder. They can access the other documents within the sales folder and they can access the other folders within this document library, but only the site owners should have access to this particular document. So to achieve this, we will right click the document, manage access and click groups, but we do not see Peter Smith here because we did not add Peter Smith in a site group. We gave individual permission to Peter Smith on this particular folder. So if I click people, here we can see Peter Smith has edit permission. And we have Bob Ross also who has honor permission on this particular file and the folder. So like I said, I want to remove everyone from this file except honors of this site. So I'll click Peter Smith, expand direct access, click can add it and I can click remove direct access and the access from Peter Smith will be removed from this particular file or you can go back click three dots advanced settings 
but here it says this document inherits permissions from its parent sales that means the level of permissions those are assigned on the sales folder this particular document is using the same permissions so here we need to break this permission inheritance also i cannot select peter smith and i do not see the option to edit permission level or to remove permission level so to break inheritance between the folder and the file we will click stop inheriting permissions make sure you are within the files permissions click stop inheriting permissions click ok and now we have two options edit user permissions remove user permissions and i can select peter smith as well so i'll remove peter smith so i'll select the account click remove user permissions and click ok so now only the site owners have permission on this particular file and if i go back to peter smith and refresh peter smith doesn't has any access to confidential document he can't even see that document but he still has access to the documents he can see the folders he can see the files he can see the sales folder but he can't see confidential document so this is how we can assign unique permissions on the files and folders level you can come across a scenario where you want to assign unique permissions on a sharepoint list or on the items of that list for example in this site i have a list and this list is using the same level of permissions those are assigned on the site level for example if i click members we can see one user is the owner concepts user who is currently logged in in this browser and then we have bob ross who has edit permission on this site and we have peter smith also who is site member and he has edit permission on this site and if i go to settings site permissions and expand site visitors we can see team one user also has read permission on the complete site let's close this window and let's go to list settings and click permissions for this list and here it says this list inherits permissions from its parent o365 which is the name of this sharepoint site and we can see same three site groups site members site owners and site visitors now if i add a user on the site level for example let me open home page on a different tab and go to settings site permissions and let's add one user in this site let's say team 2 and let's give him read permission click add so we have team 2 user added in the site visitors now if i go back to the list permissions refresh the page go to site visitors and we can see team 2 user is added within site visitors group on the list permissions because by default this list is using the permissions those are defined on the site level because this list is inheriting the permissions from the site but let's assume this particular list has confidential information and my requirement is i do not want anyone except the owners of this site to view this list and the items within this list on the other browser i have a user logged in bob ross and as of now he has access to the site and he can see contact list also and he can see the items as well he can modify the list as well because he has edit permission on the site level so as i said i do not want anyone apart from the owners of this site to view this list and the items within this list so what we need to do we need to break the permission inheritance between the site and this list so let me show you from the beginning let's go back so this is the user who is a global administrator 
and we will go to settings list settings and permissions for this list and at the top you will see an option stop inheriting permissions if you hover your mouse it says copy permissions from parent and then stop inheriting permissions so let's click stop inheriting permissions and click ok and now it says this list has unique permissions so i do not want the members of this site to have access to the list so i will select site members group and i'll click remove user permissions and click ok and i'll do the same thing for the site visitors remove user permissions ok so now we have only the site owners group and the users who are part of site owners group only these users have permissions on this particular list and let's go back to the other browser so as of now bob ross can see the list he can see the list items as well but let's refresh the page so now bob ross doesn't see contact list so this is how you can assign unique permissions on a sharepoint list now let me show you how we can assign permissions on the items level let's go back to list permissions and let me add a user so we will add bob ross and i'll give him edit permission click share refresh the page so now bob ross has added permission on this list and site owners have full control over this list and let's go back to the other browser let's refresh so now bob ross can see the contact list and he can see the items as well because he has added permission and he can even edit this list now my requirement is for example in this list we have a confidential user or let's say ceo of the company now i do not want anyone apart from the site owners to view this particular contact only the site owners should be able to see this particular list item so to achieve this we will go back and open contact list and click on this three dots or you can right click on the list item and click manage access manage access and you see bob ross here under people if you go to groups you can see only site owners but under people we can see bob ross so either you can remove bob ross from here you can click on the account expand direct access click can add it and click remove direct access this will remove bob ross from this permission and this will break the permission inheritance between the site list and this particular list item or you can go back click three dots advanced settings so these are the advanced settings for the list item and here it says this list item inherits permissions from its parent and the name is contact list that means this particular item is inheriting the permissions from the site list so we need to break this permission inheritance between the site list and this particular item so we will click stop inheriting permissions and click ok so it says this list item has unique permissions and we have got two options edit user permissions and remove user permissions so i'll select bob ross and i'll click remove user permissions and click ok so now only site owners have access to this particular list item let's go back to bob ross let's refresh and let's go back to list so now bob ross do not see ceo contact details now there is one more scenario that i want to discuss with you so by default any user who has a required permission on a list he can modify the list items but let's say i do not want anyone except the owners of this list to modify the list items 
the other users can view the list they can view the items within the list but they cannot modify any item within a list or they can only modify the items those are created by the same users let me show you this practically and things will be more clear let's go back to item permissions and click delete unique permissions so now we have the same permissions those are defined on the list level so let's go to site list and go to settings list settings permissions for this list and click delete unique permissions click ok so now everyone has access to the list and the items within the list if i go back here settings or if i click here manage access advanced settings we can see three site groups so now all the users site members site visitors and site owners have access to the site list as well as they have access on the list items and let's go back to the other browser where bob ross is logged in and let me add one item so let's add like test so bob ross has added this particular item within this list let's go back where a global administrator is logged in so within the site list we will go to settings list settings and here we'll click advanced settings and under item level permissions you will see two permissions read access and create and edit access so under read access by default it will be set to read all items that means all the users who are part of the site owners group site members group or the site visitors group they can read all the items within this particular list but if i select read items that were created by the user the users will not be able to see all the items of this list they will be able to see only those items those are created by them let's select this option and click okay and let's go back to the other browser so bob ross has added this particular list item other list items are created by the site owner so let's refresh the page and let's see what happens so now bob ross can see only the list item that is created by him all the other list items those are not created by bob ross he can't see those list items let's go back to the list settings and click advanced settings and click read all items and click okay let's go back to bob ross refresh now he can see all the list items and let's go back again to advanced settings now under create and edit access you have three options create and edit all items create items and edit items that were created by the user or none by default this is set to create and edit all items that means by default if a user has required permission he can modify the list items and then we have create items and edit items that were created by the user so if i select this option bob ross will not be able to create a new item within the list or he will not be able to edit the items within the list he can only modify the items those are created by him so let's click this option and click okay let's go back to bob ross refresh and let's try to modify an item that is not created by bob ross let's try this one and click edit let's add something click save so it says sorry you do not have access now if i try to modify the item that is created by bob ross let's add this one so bob ross can modify this list item because this particular list item was added by bob ross 
if he will try to modify this one he will not be able to it says sorry you do not have access now there is one more permission let's go back and go to advanced settings now there is one more permission that is none this permission means if i select none under create and edit access no one will be able to modify any item within this particular list only the owners of this site or a global administrator or a sharepoint administrator can modify the list items so this is how you apply unique permissions on the items level in a sharepoint list